Come on now, that's a face licker if you've ever seen one. <laughs> Do you like dags? Do you like dogs? Do you like corgis? Do you wish that you could have dogs in government? Well, have I got news for you. In Hearts of Iron, a popocracy is a possible. <laughs> Hello there, my name is Pigeon and we are playing Hearts of Iron 4. Today we are on a quest for corgis. New game, 1936 start. The UK. UK has got a nice focus tree. It was updated with Man the Guns. And you can do Steady as She Goes, and that will give you the historical path uh, or something potentially a little bit different. But uh, we're not going to do that. Um, yeah, so we'll be doing a change of course and we'll be going the King's Party. And we want this because we need to kick off a series of events. Research, just be the standard opening written. They actually get some radio tech which is great i like that all right and then we have a fourth slot honestly we don't need that much um tech's really not gonna matter this game uh, i'm just gonna do fighter ones just build, build some cities um and all of the things it, it, it feels wrong not to uh not to care about these things feels wrong not not to set up uh you know uh, just a ton of factories and set your things up correctly like i said i, I don't actually i don't need it get these guys out no we could we could build a bunch of um yeah we, we, we can build a bunch of light tanks i will show you a nice little division template which uh, is good great in single player terrible anywhere else we honestly don't care about anything other than the home islands so that's what we're going to do. We are going to defend the home islands. Yep. And oh, there's none down here. All right. And that's it. We don't need to train anything. We have some decisions, but none of them particularly matter at the moment. And five speed. Let's go. Zoom. All right. So the first event that we get, uh, King George the fifth dies. His son will assume the mantle as King Edward VIII, but there are already concerns that he is too independent of thought. Stanley Baldwin and Neville Chamberlain are preparing to ensure that he will accept the direction from Prime Minister and Cabinet. May he rest in peace. So we lose some stability here for a bit, which is a little unfortunate, but we will get it back. Yeah, this will start off some events. We just need a defensive person. We essentially just need to keep the home islands. That's it. So, oh, go on, Monty. You can be, you can be the field marshal. <laughs> Okay, so a change of course is finished. Um, we grab this and then we are immediately not going to take the King's party because you will notice that we need this here. We need Edward VIII is married while sips it. Okay, so in the meantime, uh, we can, you know, just take some other focus. So at this moment, there's not that much that really matters on our quest for Corgis. Uh, but what does matter is that we sort out this marriage business because, you know, our, our king, this is unmarried, right? We need it. We need to sort that out. All right, so we're losing democratic support and we're getting war support at the same time. And we will be able to switch up to a higher economy law soon. All right, we got some pop-ups. Rhineland, who cares? Uh, the Montreux, Montreux Convention. Honestly, I don't care that much either. I can get some naval support and I lose stability. You know what? I don't care. I don't want to lose stability. Let's see. What do you, what do you got, Krimi? Crisis has been concluded. Okay. Again, don't care that much. They're not corgis. I don't care. <laughs> okay. We've got another event. Uh, Edward VIII abdication crisis. For some time, King Edward VIII has entertained hopes to marry the American Wallace Simpson. A constitutional crisis has now arisen as Miss Simpson is not only divorced from her previous husband, but in point of fact, still married to her current husband. Scandalous. Presently pursuing a second divorce. General outrage has ensued on the grounds that as king, being the head of the Church of England, Edward cannot marry a divorcee. <laughs> hmm. It's uh, some interesting rules you got there. Church of England with the whole divorcee, divorcee. Thing. Hmm. The king, however, has made it abundantly clear that he is very much in love with Simpson and intends to marry her, regardless of the opinions of his governments or his subjects. As such, only three options remain open to him. All right, so we do have three choices here, but on our quest, there is only one 
correct answer. We could abdicate, but that would not do what we want. We could compromise on a morganastic marriage, or we can insist on the royal marriage. What we're actually going to do is do the compromise on the morganastic marriage. Why, you ask? Well, you'll see. The German Reich dominates Dutch trade negotiations. Hmm. Uh, I mean, the button does say we cannot allow them to drift into the German sphere of influence, but I don't care. <laughs> yeah, so we've got the crisis going on. Uh, in the meantime, I am going to grab Silent Workhorse, more PP. The working classes support marriage. Okay, so you, you got two decisions. Uh, you can accept this, get some more stability and some more support for the non-aligned, or you can abdicate. Obviously, we are not going to abdicate. All right, newspapers oppose the marriage. You know, the Morning Post, gosh darn them. <laughs> Yeah, a recent article in the Morning Post has cited the king's responsibility to the country and his people, stating that his status and privileges come with the burden of duty, and that he must sacrifice either his marriage or the crown. Um, yeah, that's not going to happen. That's that's not going to happen, so just an unfortunate blow. Support forms for Edward. In the midst of tremendous outrage caused by the king's decision, there has been some voices raise, rising up in support of King Edward. Though isolated from the main political parties, their names nonetheless carry weight. Winston Churchill, Oswald Mosley, and David Lloyd George. Thus strengthened in his resolve, the king has made it clear that he has no intention of changing his mind in the matter, and the marriage shall go on as planned. Great. So you have the option again to abdicate, uh, which, you know, not going to happen. And yeah, we get some more uh, support for the king. We get some weekly stability. Uh, as I mentioned, we would be getting that back. And we get some more popularity for the non-aligned. If we look now, we are at 17%. It's not perfect, but uh, it'll get a bit bigger. Edward VIII holds radio speech. Uh, again, you can abdicate, or uh, turns out his side of the story was pretty convincing. Get some more support, and political power, and stability. Boom. Cabinet resigns. Uh, you know, maybe this would be a pretty big event uh, where you're like, oh, maybe we should uh, abdicate, but we're on a quest for corgis. Uh, so, good riddance. We shall not stop the king. Yeah, and we get the fallen government icon, which is kind of cool. It hurts our political gain, uh, our stability. Um, yeah, it's not a fun one. Uh, and the newspapers, once again, uh, oppose the marriage. It's that, uh, you know, dastardly morning post. It's against the king. Uh, yeah, we lose some stability again. It's going down. She's tanking. 27%. This is like, this is like a France playthrough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we also got our war support up. I didn't notice that. We're going to go to partial mob and we are going to switch them out with the Matildas. What is interesting about this is we just got the colonial elite buff <laughs> uh, from the last focus we did. And then the minions break with crown. <laughs> Whoops. Well, power powerless to stop them for now. Yeah, this is a, a pretty big debuff for the UK. It removes the allies and... All right, so you lose a bunch of stability, uh, which we don't have a lot of already. Uh, it removes the allies faction and a bunch of countries become free. But you can continue for the marriage. So that was a little bit leggy for a second. And we will look, you can see Canada. It's not just Canada. You got the, the flag from the 60s. <laughs> just, you know, pops up. Uh, and there is a new faction. So the UK is not in it. Oh, it's South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada in the Commonwealth of Nations. India is independent. All right, so we're not going to take a national focus for a little bit to make our PP up. Uh, we got some more working class supports the marriage. Nice. Get that stability up. How dare they? So this is the first time that we got the upper classes oppose marriage. An opposite of the lower classes or the, the workers. Yeah, nothing can do. These these events seem to be a little bit random. I'm not entirely sure if you get a, a certain number of each, but this is the first time that we've seen the upper classes. Yay! We are no longer under the effects of support for the king. That's... wait, what? <laughs> okay, this is the, the big event that we were building up to. The royal marriage of Edward VIII. But will it mend the divides in our nation? Uh, let's find out. Alright, we got a little bit more 
stability, local power, uh, and support for non-aligned, which kicks us up to 36. Uh, we're still the conservative party, but now that the marriage has been over, sorry, now that the marriage has happened, we can take the king's party. Mm, mm, look at all this juicy stuff we get. Ooh, ooh. So we'll get some more political power. Goal tension can go down, depending on what we want to do. We get support for non-aligned, ideology defense. We switch our parties to the King's Party. Just removes National Spirit Edward VIII. So we get rid of this uh, National Spirit, but then we get a different one where it's an uh, inexperienced imperialist. But yeah, let's take that now. Okay. So that kicked out uh, Philip Keir. Uh, so I lost the, the, the political guy uh, because they're not part of... Because he's democratic. Okay. The King's Party. King Edward VIII in power is King's Party. God save the king. Okay. Boom. All right. So that gives us uh, a new ruler. And we can go straight down here to aristocratic. It'll give us more stability. But also we don't lose the political power. And we also and we get some more Spartan, which is pretty good. We got God save the king here. Brilliant. Uh, but we also got an interesting uh, event. So the, the Hindenburg incident. Uh, sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes this happens, uh, and this playthrough, the Hindenburg did not crash. Close call. I'm not entirely sure if they, they did safety regulations. Yeah, you have to take air innovations to get that, I believe. But I'm not entirely sure. No, so it would be here. It'd be here. There'd be a safety. Yeah, so there's just a small chance that that actually happens. And the Hindenburg survived this playthrough. Wow. Okay, so it's really at this point, the uh, the game wants you to, or the focus tree, leads you down to a path where you can appeal to the, the loyalists and then try to bring them back into the fold. This gives you like a war goal against them. You can ally the, the uprisings. But the corgis, they're not necessary for any of that. That just seems like a whole lot of work. Yeah, we're, we're just not going to do it. Oh, and another one. Look, look, look at this. Uh, Amelia Earhart uh, circumnavigates the globe. So with the U.S., if you were playing the U.S. and this happens, you actually can get her as a uh, fighter ace. It's an ace pilot. <laughs> okay, I want to start some fights in the comments. So this here is the starting division template. Uh, that you get for infantry and the best defensive infantry unit is this it costs twice as much uh <laughs> but you get some armor bonus uh you get some hardness uh and uh yeah if you're not moving them around uh this is the best unit tell me why i'm wrong yeah that's right june 1938 still building sieves oh yeah and it looks like germany is now at war with uh france and czechoslovakia so it may, may have been because of what we took uh and france went down a little entente or something i'm not too sure but they're at war now it's uh, a year early and we'll have to see what happens so i am not in this so i'm able to send an attache now it's quite a bit on the france french border did they get memo they got memo and they declared war on luxembourg okay France joined the Commonwealth of Nations. And yeah, this brings in. So it looks like the Allies are fighting a year early without the UK. <laughs> so considering we're going to be at war soon, let's build some more civilian factories. Because we want more civilian factories. Okay, so they also declared war in Poland. Okay, and they're breaking through Czech. Luxembourg is pushing. <laughs> Just, uh, you're making it hard on yourself, Germany. Don't know why. Don't know why. <laughs> Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Go, go, go. Uh, okay, so it's September 1939. I think we should build some more civilian factories. Uh, you know what? And we'll also go to free trade for uh, for more civilian factories. All right, Poland capitulated. Just going to wait till they finish Czechoslovakia, and then I'll, uh, I'll justify in Germany to get into the war. Oh, come on, Germany. Really? Just, just go this way. Go here, and then go up. It's all like just plain tiles. Dude, come on, look at all the planes. It's just so easy. Why? No, go away. Like Italy is gonna take France. What is this? I. Uh... Okay, so it's 19 March 1940, and I think we should just build some more civilian factories. Oh my god, finally. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, so before the war ends, I need to justify very quickly. Okay, okay, hold on, France. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, he showed up for 20 days. I messed up. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, okay. Oh, no. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay, I may have really messed this up. I may have to re... Okay, Canada's a major. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Canada's a major. We're, <laughs> we're fine. <sighs> Gotta love that, though. Like, let's look here. Miners. Uh, yeah, you know, like, with 50 factories, or whatever, like, 55 probably, maybe 30 divisions. Yeah, Canada's a major. That's, that's it. And that's France capitulated. Okay. And Italy took a lot, a lot from them. Okay. And, you know, we're gonna conquer the Rhineland. Of course we are. Boom. Alright. Now we are... We've got some planes here. And I think what we should do is defend this area. And defend this area up here. Maybe send some of our other planes here. Merge them up. Uh, we've got Scotland covered, Northern Ireland, or England, Northern England. Yeah, I think we need to also cover Ireland. Yeah, that looks right. Um, these guys can stand by. You can stand by. All this cast can stand by. We'll just merge you up. I didn't train, but whatever. All right, yeah, so we've got all the regions that we need to cover. We've covered uh, Scotland, um, Ireland, and Northern England. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Um, I don't think I'm forgetting anything at all. We've certainly got the entirety of the British Isles covered. Just to go over that again, we've got North, or we've got Ireland, we've got Scotland, and we've got Northern England, and that's everything. That's that's everything that we need to uh, everything we need to cover. Yep, looks good to me. Oh, you want military access? Okay. Yep. Oh. Oh, what? 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 No. What? How, how could this happen? Oh my God. Let me read this. Let me read this. Buckingham Palace bombed. King Edward dead. Oh my God, the king is dead. Long live the king. So we have we have uh, George the sixth now. But how could that have happened? We we covered all the areas and let me look again. Uh, Ireland, Scotland, and North. Oh no, we forgot something. Southern England. Oh, how could this? Oh, all like the, like and how do you forget Southern England? Come on. I mean, I can understand Ireland and Wales or whatever. Southern England? Okay, well, tragedy. We, we couldn't have prevented that. I, I don't think there was anything we could have ever done. Uh, yeah, so if you weren't aware, the, the, the bombing event uh, was needed to trigger the change of head of state. That's just how this one goes. <laughs> get that air supremacy. Let's get some defense. Uh, let's uh, pump up the extensive. See how many guys we can get in the field. Uh, we also want to go to war economy. Look at this, lots of PP. But oh, we could join the, <laughs> we could join the common turn. And then maybe I can take it over. Call it the corgi turn. All right, we're 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 gonna join the common turn. Yeah, that sounds fun. Oh, look at this. Get to see the front because of our ally from over in northern France. A little bit of a little bomberooning. Yeah, they have our blessing. They could be. Yeah, you you can be. You're blessed. You're blessed. Oh yeah. You guys wanna? You wanna? You get independence, and you get independence, and you get independence. Sri Lanka. Yeah. Why not? Why were they socialist? <laughs> you get independence. You get independence. What a banana, man. South Africa has capitulated. That is an Italian Africa for sure. All right. So it's May 1944. So you get a a new monarch, inexperienced a monarch headstrong and you get some extra stability because of the popular queen however this concludes our quest because with elizabeth we've got something special for you oh that's right we've got dookie we've got jane and we've got crackers these are by far my favorite political advisors you can get in this game because dookie well dookie's an, a heel snipper and jane oh well she's a snuggler <laughs> and crackers come on now that's a face licker if you've ever seen one um and, and they're actually really good it's like um you get a, like plus one percent recruitable population and five percent war sport that's great i mean the Political power gain is, um, it's not super great, but I mean, you've got the King's party and you've got the, you know, uh, Elizabeth as mon monarch. So you get 15% for each of those, right? So that counterbalances all of this. So uh, like Jane, like let's grab Jane here. This is, uh, 
consumer goods negative five percent and i'm going to show you something later and you're going to love this all right negative five percent we get an extra five percent stability and we got daily support for non-aligned uh we are also going to grab uh dookie you know we lose some uh, stability here but changing costs are lower okay may maybe that's not the best political advisor you know given that you don't really need to change anything at this point but i don't know we're, we're grabbing dookie uh and then obviously we're replacing mosley with crackers uh but before we do that i do want to show you one thing real quick the best part is this right here consumer goods we are currently using zero yes that's right <laughs> with british austerity <laughs> with mosley war bonds and jane we are consuming zero consumer goods i think that's just fantastic and the only reason why we even have mosley and at the moment is to counteract the improved working conditions i have there i clicked that earlier to bring up the stability once that event expires we don't even need mosley jane's good enough jane's got this on her own <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. This is by far the best set of political advisors you get in Hearts of Iron. You can't beat them. You know, you may say there are a few negatives. There's not. There's no negatives. So the question is now, can Crackers, Jane, and Dookie defeat the Axis powers? I think the answer is yes.